Think about how our society moves. We move away from mystery as we get older, unless we're mm -hmm. like religious nut jobs. We grow up like thinking, oh, there's Santa Claus and there's a tooth fairy and there's all this stuff. And as you get older, one of the hallmarks of maturity is knowing there's no fucking mystery. It's all just mm -hmm. work and taxes and deal with your bullshit, right? You look at shamanic societies, like the ones we all evolved in, they move toward mystery mm -hmm. through their lives. They move closer to the, the rituals and the gods and the other world it's a completely different trajectory and so we end up connection. depressed it creates connection and it yeah. creates humility when you're when you're worshiping the gods you're you're not just worshiping the gods you're also a, you're also offering up your own humility that you don't compare to the gods when right. you're experiencing mm. a hunter-gatherer lifestyle you are getting the exact programming and rewards that your body has been set up to to receive in order to stay alive forever we're in a transitionary period with our bodies because our bodies have all these reward systems built in and there's no need whatsoever to, to feed them. There's no need to feed the fight and flight. There's no need to feed the hunter gatherer. There's no need. You're going to the supermarket and you're getting your food. You're going to work by sitting down all day. Yeah. None of it makes sense to your body. Right. Your body is absolutely baffled. Right. And if you're not doing something that you absolutely love while you're sitting in that studio, with, you know, with designing something or art or whatever it is, I mean, you could conceivably obviously go to a job and it'd be the most amazing job ever. But if it's not the most amazing job ever, if you really are sitting there just doing nonsense that you don't give a fuck about all yeah. day, there's nothing like that in all of nature. Gathering food is exciting. Hunting is exciting. Fishing is exciting. Right. Planting crops is satisfying. If you pull a tomato off of a vine and you eat that tomato, there's a visceral, ge almost genetic excitement that you get from that. We're not getting any of those rewards yeah. all day long, but we're forcing ourselves to live in this way. It's not like living in a way where we would get those rewards would be impossible. It's just it's not, society and it almost engineered itself to make it so that we can innovate and make new things easier and quicker. That's what society did. It pushed people into large groups. It's almost like the machine wants to be born, so it reprograms society to live for the machine instead of to live for its own need system, its own wants and desires, mm. its own if you could tell someone that you're going to live a finite life, this, you only have this amount of, let's manage that life and let's see how you handle it. How much time do you think you'd spend sitting in a fucking box doing some shit you don't like? You wouldn't. You would spend none. You'd put zero in the box. You would say, well, what, what percentage of your day do you want to sit down and do something you don't want? Zero. Okay, well, if, when you're engineering your life, you're engineering your life to, to, to live for your needs, to, 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 to exist for what would make you happy and what would make you like a, a person who's feeling satisfied and feeling like you're, you're thrilled by life. But that's not what society wants. What society wants is to make sure that you... You, your reward system is going to be based on material items because if it's not based on material items then we can't make more material items we want to make sure that you always need the newest craziest shit so we're going to get you in a society where you're inundated by visual images of things that are way better than the things that you possess and your main focus will be possessing those things because they will equate happiness mm. to you of course you'll never receive that happiness because if you did you'd jump off the game if having a 69 Mustang was the thing that would make you really happy, I always want a 69 you'd do Mustang. Yeah. You'd get that 69 Mustang yeah. and you'd be good. But it's not. You're done. Then you want a 70 Firebird. Then you want a this. Then you want a that. And you get caught up in this, this path of collecting items. This ensures that these items continue to get made. Right. So we're living our lives for this system more than we're living our lives for humanity. So there's an intelligent life that's waiting to be born out of the, the human innovation. It's already born. It's already born, and we are slaves of it. That, that's what this book is about. All this talk about Frankenstein and the singularity, whatever. Frankenstein exists. Frankenstein is the economic system that we are enslaved by in order to keep the economic system running. You're right. It's not designed for human satisfaction. It's designed to perpetuate itself. Right. It's designed. Profit is the, the, the central engine in this whole thing. And like when I see a commercial that says, you know, like we, you know, BP believes that. But BP doesn't believe anything. It has no brain. It's not a being. I don't give a fuck what R Mitt Romney says. Corporations are not people, my friend. Corporations are artificial structures that have been set up that have taken on life like fucking Frankenstein monster. And they've turned against us. And now. They rule the world, they, and, the, and they don't give a fuck about the plastic in the ocean and overfishing and the cruelty to the fucking pigs and the industrial farms and whatever else. 
It, they don't care because they can't care. 